Hey, this is Mr. Peterson. We're going to do photosynthesis in five minutes or less, maybe. Uh, we'll see. So here's the formula for photosynthesis. We got six carbon dioxide, six waters. We make six uh, oxygens and some glucose. So think about what's happening to the entropy of this system. What's happening? Is this an exergonic or an endergonic reaction? Think about that. Those are questions you should be able to answer. Okay, so important things again. What's the energy involved? Where does it happen? What goes in? What comes out? Same things we talked about with cellular respiration. All right, so we'll try to do it in five minutes. Set, go. Ooh, there's the clock. It's going. All right, now there are two components or two major reactions that happen in photosynthesis. One is called the light dependent reaction, it relies on energy from light, so waves of energy. And then we have the light independent reactions, uh, it relies on the products that are produced by the light dependent reaction. So, two major things. Back in the day, we used to call them the light and the dark reaction, but dark is like it happens only in the dark. That's not true, it happens all the time. Okay, so uh, we have light dependent, light independent reactions on uh, clock is ticking. So here are some plant cells. So these green things that you see in there, those are chloroplasts. That's where photosynthesis happens. So those, those chloroplasts that are floating around inside of those cells, each one of those contains uh, the material, the pigments, the chemistry to do photosynthesis were down about four minutes. So here's a stylized, here's a model of a chloroplast. In the chloroplast we have these stacks of membranes, uh, we call them thylakoids. Uh, we put them together, we have a grana. And in the grana, individual thylakoids is where the action happens. So here's, here's a cross section of a grano. Those green blobs that are in there, those are chlorophyll molecules. Those are a pigment um, that actually is the stuff that traps the energy from the sun. So it traps energy from the sun, it converts light energy into chemical energy. Amazing molecule. So it takes waves and it converts it into, by mechanical means, into chemical energy. Phenomenal. So we've got some light energy that comes in waves that are coming from the sun. This is the light dependent reaction. So light is powering this reaction. So in that membrane, uh, we're going to have some, some chemistry that happens. The first thing that's going to occur, so here's the first thing that happens in the light-dependent reaction. So we need chlorophyll, we need light it's for energy, right? Okay, so the, here's the water molecule. This is the water your plants. Water comes in, and the first thing that happens to water in chlorophyll is that it splits the water. It splits it into hydrogen ions, protons, and oxygen. So the oxygen is the stuff that you and I need. What do we need the oxygen for? Well, in cellular respiration, it's the final electron acceptor in cellular respiration. So these two processes, photosynthesis and cellular rest clock is ticking. Those two things are linked. So the hydrogen ions are going to be used to do what? We're going to make a bunch of hydrogen ions. What do you think? An electron transport chain, a proton pump. Yeah, we're going to make some ATP. And the ATP is going to drive the dark reaction. So those hydrogen ions are, are pumped across the thylakoid membrane and a couple of things happen. Number one, there's an electron transport chain that makes ATP. The ATP is going to be the fuel, the power for the light independent reaction. So the ATP is going to be is going to be required for that. And then there's another molecule. Take a look at that. NADP. Yeah, NADP. Sounds like NAD, pretty closely related. It's going to be an electron acceptor. It's also going to carry hydrogens. So if you remember, we have we need um, oxygen. Or I'm sorry, we need water. We the, the hydrogens from the water are going to be needed uh, to make sugars. So the next thing that happens in the stroma is something called the Calvin cycle, and the Calvin cycle is the business of carbon fixation. We're going to take carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and we're going to put it into a form uh, that, that we're going to be talking about glucose, right? So the Calvin cycle is named after Melvin Calvin, who's actually a guy from the University of Minnesota, Nobel Prize guy. You know, you, you discover something really cool, you get a Nobel Prize, a million dollars, a big medal, stuff like that, and you get the cycle named after you. Really cool. So the Calvin cycle is much like the Krebs cycle, except for the fact it's in reverse. So this, we're going to take carbon dioxides and fix them into chains of 
of uh, carbohydrates, that happens in the stroma, so that's the space outside the thylakoid in the, in the chloroplast. So the chloroplast has got two main parts, the, the stroma, which is kind of like the matrix, kind of like the matrix in the mitochondria, and it has the grana, which has the thylakoid membranes, which are kind of like the inner membranes of mitochondria. The eventual product is going to be sugar molecules. So what goes in? Carbon dioxide, what comes out? Sugars. What's required? What's the energy involved? Uh, ATP. The hydrogens from NADPH are used to add to the CO2 to make C6H12O6. Woo! We did it! Five minutes or less. What goes in? What comes out? Where does it happen? What's the energy involved? Photosynthesis. Five minutes or less. Hope that helps.